All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we are here presenting the Northford Center Connectivity Study, and we, well, Scott and I are from VL Companies, and we are uh, working on behalf of working with the town and the SCROG to present to you alternatives um, for the Northford Center area. So again, I'm Mike Kroger. I have 10 years of transportation experience and have worked with SCROG and municipalities um, on several studies. And so, you can introduce you. Yeah, that works. So Scott Sebrak is here as well. He has more than two years of experience in transportation engineering. And similar to me, he has significant work on SCROG projects as well. So just a quick agenda. We're going to go through the projects put into the study, the purpose and need, the scope of the study, existing deficiencies, all of an alternative analysis, and then we'll have the next steps along with questions and comments. So the, what we want to do is we want to do a quick presentation of the existing conditions and all the items that are out around here. But then we also, after the presentation is done, we want to use the boards in the back and have everyone, we have little uh, stickers that we want to have people put on their preferred alternative. So the great stickers because we put on preferred alternatives and comments to be put on each of the individual Boards for us to consider because the reason we're here is to seek input from the public. So the um, project limits. The project limits um, extend from Route 22 to the north, um, bound by the post road about the north, and Mansfield. Um, and still have a missile ground as well. And then it continues down to where we are in the bottom left corner. And then our study limits also to include the plaza on the right hand side on the 22 to 4 story. So, like I mentioned, our study area is comprised as the North Road Town Design District 2 or the Central Business District Zone. And so we have north south limits on Route 17 as well as north south limits on Route 22 as well as east-west limits on that slight portion to the northern part of the project on Route 22 as well. So this includes uh, eight, eight total intersections, two of them signalized, and six, six non-signalized intersections. So as part of our study, we looked at the existing conditions. And the existing conditions analysis it was to look at safety, involved looking at needs and deficiencies, so we conducted a field review of the existing conditions, and we also looked at this area in particular during school dismissal time, just to try to get an understanding of this traffic operations, traffic flow. We did take counts of this at the school location as well uh, during arrival and dismissal, or during dismissal time to see, to be able to analyze um, the traffic operations as well. We looked at the crash data for the latest three-year period, and we have comparison to a road safety audit that was done here uh, in 2023. So we're able to do a compar comparison to see that the crash data largely remains unchanged from when these were these, uh, the same area we studied previously. We also identify transit facility locations as well as existing pedestrian bicycle accommodations. We reviewed the plan of conservation development as well as previous studies. So there was a 2006 corridor study on the 22 that we looked at and uh, the 2023 road safety audit as well. And then also consideration was the existing uh, cultural and historically significant landmarks and buildings. So once the existing conditions were done, we wanted to develop study alternatives affecting the connectivity and circulation for the road, uh, for the road operator for all users using this roadway. So we looked at traffic operations, we looked at access management to try to reduce curb cuts where we can to reduce conflict points. We also looked at utility modification, bicycle and pedestrian accommodations, as well as right away uh, use and acquisition. And we also looked at wetlands as well, uh, and wetland impacts, which will come up on a few of these alternatives. So some of the existing conditions, uh, deficiencies that we noticed, or inconsistent or missing sidewalks along Route 17 and Route 22. We also noticed that there, like, like I mentioned before, access management issues with having several anchor, multiple access points at the same location. So we tried to identify and come up with ways to consolidate access points. 
And we also looked at the unique intersection geometry, including that turn lane uh, uh, at the Route 22 Old Post Road across from the Road Store, as well as the Route 20 or Route 17 intersection uh, at Hardsley Avenue and Route 22 as well. And then we also know the lack of bicycle safety features throughout this area as well. So this is, so now we've separated these out into essentially four alternatives. Um, each alternative, obviously, you can see on the back, there's alternative one, two A, two B, three, and four. Each, there's some minor differences that's got to get into between a few of them, but I guess separately, they all have some pretty significant differences between them. I guess the commonalities between them all are that the alternatives, all, all, all alternatives include bike lanes, as well as ADA compliant pedestrian uh, ramps, crosswalks, and sidewalks. Um, all alternatives also include access management, so again, trying to reduce the curb cuts and consolidate where we can. And all alternatives also provide for, or generally all alternatives provide for two full lanes on that old post road access with, uh, on that old post road location with the exception of alternative four, which Scott will get into in more detail. So again, um, these are the five, there are essentially four alternatives. Alternative one is just the realignment of Arzay Avenue, whereas alternative two involves the realignment of Arzay Avenue with the proposed boulevard in the back. Um, so this boulevard allows for access on the back side of all the developments, which will then connect, uh, connect essentially to the uh, and the Enfield Drive as well. So the difference between 2A and 2B, that Scott will get into the differences there, but 2A is um, a proposed boulevard that has access management and has, allows for two-way access at most locations, whereas alternative 2B tries to encourage circulation entering from the state road and then exiting back out of the drive. Alternative three is a roundabout at Arnsley Avenue, and alternative four are intersection improvements at Mansfield Drive. Hello? Hi. So just to reintroduce myself, my name is Scott Sebrak. I'm a transportation engineer at Yale Companies. I'll take you through the design alternatives we've put together so far. As Mike mentioned before, it's important to note these are all just sketches, ideas, um, we're looking for feedback on the guys that you like or you don't like, what we should change. Ultimately, we'll take your feedback, talk to the town, talk to the city, um, and come up with a design for the future of this area. Uh, but again, these are all proposed sketches at this time. Um, so I'll, I'll generally try to go from uh, the left hand side of the screen to the right, or south to north uh, in real life. Um, so on the top left hand page, you can see the, the colored signs there. That's the crossing. Uh, Cross 17 here, um, just right outside of the community center. We're suggesting equipping that crossing with RRFDs, or rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Um, so essentially, there'd be a bar under the existing sign, and the border of the sign would uh, light up as someone was using the crossing. Um, we recognize it's outside of the community center, outside of the school, so we're trying to make that crossing uh, a bit safer. Um, the Orange lines, you can see the gravity plans, those designate new sidewalks. Um, you'll see that consistently on all five of the sketches that we'll go through. Um, and as Mike mentioned before, we're aiming for two 11 foot travel lanes along 22, along 17, um, and all of the concepts as well. Um, also, we're going to have those bike lanes in either direction along 17 and along 22. So, those are kind of like the common uh, features of each design. Alternative one mainly focuses on the relocation of RS Avenue. So we would be sliding it just to the south of it, um, realigning Route 17, so we're creating a more square, four way signalized intersection at that location. Um, it goes to the next slide. Um, just a quick slide summarizing kind of what I went over there. Uh, as we transition to alternative two, um, the biggest change from alternative uh, one. 2A and 2B is the addition, uh, if you look at the bottom right hand side of the page, uh, the addition of an access boulevard connecting uh, the parking lot near the daycare to the bank parking lot. Um, the goal of both 2A and 2B is to allow access um, into the commercial developments, and then we're encouraging these users to exit back to 1722 via the real line of Arts Avenue uh, or coming out with signalized intersection that makes the drive. 
We're trying to consolidate redundant access points, which uh, reduces congestion, improves safety, uh, and hopefully improves the circulation of the area as well. Um, if we go to the alternative 2B, the biggest difference between 2A and 2B is at all driveways, we're allowing vehicles to enter, but they all must exit either Arctic Avenue, Mansfield Drive, or at the North River store, that's transitioning to a, a right in, right out driveway. Um, so a bit more liberal access management here, um, restricting access back up to 22, which even further improves safety and circulation of these locations. Alternative three, we're building on that previously mentioned um, road safety audit. They had put together a concept for a roundabout, so we kind of uh, took that design uh, and ran with it a bit further. This sketch includes all the, the typical features of a roundabout, including some deflection at each approach, uh, the mountable truck apron, which is hatched and dragged in the center, um, some crosswalks, yield bars, and some uh, splitter islands that can be used for pedestrian refuge. Um, again, this will also include uh, the proposed sidewalks, uh, the 11 foot travel lanes, um, and some bike lanes as well. And then the last step we have here um, focuses on the signalized intersection uh, of Mansfield Drive and Route 17. Uh, we're recommending revising this approach so it's two-way along Route 22. Um, this design we'll have to talk further with CTDOT about. There's uh, slight concerns with the grade as you travel down Route 22, so we have to pursue some engineering solutions for this. Um, but this design, again, includes the sidewalks, includes the bike lanes, uh, and we're focusing on making that a, a two-way street where all traffic will come out into the signal at the of drop. So in terms of next steps, we are in the process. This is this is our way of trying to finalize the alternative to seeking public input and taking it into account as we rate the alternative, trying to come up with the best alternative or best combination of alternatives. So we would be incorporating public comments on these preliminary sketches to try to help finalize them. And then we would present these alternatives to the technical advisory committee, which is made up of Straw, it's made up of the town, it's made up of Connecticut DOT and obviously the consultants are working as well, so that there will be that continued coordination with the town, with Straw and with DOT. And then we would work to try to finalize these alternatives and try and compile them into a, a, into a technical memorandum of these that will summarize the alternatives and the preferred as well. So this is our contact information, um, both of our emails, and there is a link at the bottom. I know that there was some questions about trying to access it online. So this link at the bottom would provide access to the alternatives which we posted on the website. Um, and I guess... Sure. Yeah. So, so Sprog is the regional organization that North Brantford is from. So it, it, it's the North Brantford is part of the South Central Council Regional, the South Central Regional Council of Governments. I guess at this point we would look to, I guess we could go through questions and then we can also, um, we also want to get votes on the board. That's what, so we have to vote the boards up there for votes and then for comments as well. But if you want to take questions, we can do that. Hello. 
Very good evening, everyone, and uh, gentlemen, I thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to address uh, my fellow neighbors here. My name is Randolph Lindsley Simpson. I reside at 300 Old Post Road here in Northford. I'm going to go back uh, where I can effectively speak. At, at, well, 60 years ago, I was old enough. Uh, I was a teen at that point, and we were well aware of the fact that you know, bicycles, uh, uh, I spent a lot of time here in town. I came back here about 35, almost 40 years ago as a full-time resident. I grew up in northern Westchester. Uh, the first place I was brought in 1952 was North. I lived in my ancestral homestead that was built in 1790. It has been owned by my family since 1790. And I continue to live there because my deep love of this community. My ancestors were born there. They died there. They got buried right over here. Cemetery, every one of them. This is home. This is where my blood came from. So yeah, I, I have nothing to say unless I speak, stand up and speak for my community. I can't stand here and complain unless I came out and actually voice my opinion. Again, I appreciate your experience. I have 60 years of experience. Same place, same town. Who remembers 60 years ago when I came down 22? It's kind of a convoluted process to uh, arrive in Northwood out of North Haven. It, it wasn't a straight shot. Clinton Bill Road kind of broke it. Went this way and that way and back on it this way. Um, it was kind of a difficult process. And of course, 91 came through. You remember that? Um, I remember uh, what it was like before 91 was there. The trip up to Northwood uh, in the old 54 DeSoto was quite an experience. But anyway, aside from all of that, Taking such pride and love of my town, and people take Northford. Where's Northford? I've never heard of Northford. It's that, that funny little slice of the pie that was undiscovered. Orange, the shoreline, and so on. I, I mean, every part around New Haven must be these days. And this, this beautiful, beautiful area that we got to live in here, that we're all feeling. I, I hear that, like I hear Dean's tractor, pop, 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 that little one-cylinder diesel John Deere coming up the road, manure spreader, hitting the bumps, slopping manure on the side. That, that was Middletown Avenue. Until the state decided to blow open that intersection so that people come to south on 17 down in the Durham area. Boy, I tell you, they see brake lights, might be a bus. Well, no need for a brake challenge. And they're off on the old post road at 55 miles an hour. The post office would not, after that realignment, and then blowing that intersection wider than any kind of an exit off of 91 or any kind of industry, would not put a post office box on my, like used to be right there, with the hitching post, where they used to hitch the horses. Remember, 1790s, you didn't live in a subdivision. The wagon would get stuck in mud. The slate would be able to make it up there. But the post office wouldn't even give me Post office box on my side of the road. They said, Postmaster says, no. That's putting my postal workers like in danger. They come off at 17 to wide speed. Somebody, my truck, my postal worker is going to get hit and killed. It's got to go on the other side of the road. So this 70 plus year old guy is now going to sit there and hope that nobody comes off that 17 to get across. And they're coming up over a blind hump there. Trying to get up. Now, you talk about queue times, okay? Anybody come down to the Bell Road? Who wants to come down past the Congregational Church? Do that washboard, make that right, queue up to try and make a left hand turn at that thing to go 17 North. It's a nightmare. A nightmare. Your chance of getting out there is slim to none unless somebody's courteous enough to stop and wave you on, provided there's no traffic coming south. So, where do they queue up now? Ten out of the eight out of the ten cars coming down to 17 on Clinton Bill Road, don't bother. Body is just cut off on that corner. Dangerous intersection there. The one crossing over the business park road with stop signs all over the place, got a little left and right, boy, shoot when you can. And they would rather come off the business park, stop sign, up the road, Matt Cornelli. The police chief said, hey, you've got to put a stop sign by my house. You have a stop sign there. And you know what? I guarantee you, not one of them 
is trying to avoid this mess downtown. Does this mean to me? Not even close. I come home and I try and respect my neighbors. They have children. They live there. I do the closest 25 mile an hour speed limit. By the time I hit old post, my, my home at the end of Old Post Road, six, seven cars stacked up behind me. And they are pissed. I had one that had to follow me. And as I came up and I was going to make a left hand turn in my driveway, they said, oh, they, they thought I was going to make a left on 17. They went and swerved around me and almost teeth on me as I, because they, the intersection's 100 feet up the road. They did not want to have to follow me because I'm doing a speed limit. I have to queue up when I arrive from home. I have to queue up and wait for my turn to get up by my driveway so I can actually turn in. I'm waiting again. They have created the planning and zoning in this town fell short. I attended so many meetings. I knew what was being proposed was not good. And they hired so-called traffic specialists. You know what? I heard more unadulterated bovine waste material coming out of their mouths about how their, you know, it, the, the development across the street was only going to create 35 trips a day. Yeah, it's in one half hour. Are you kidding me? You pay somebody enough money, you get give him seventy-five thousand dollars. You think he's going to come back with a report that's negative to what you want? But they allowed this lousy development to go on, this nightmare to go on, and now the local people, we are paying the price for it. My taxes to get paid, new police station, new high school. They can think of more ways to spend money. Take a Covered relief money. Oh, we need a show trailer. Yeah, let's spend $200,000 on a trailer that makes an appearance in three days. <clears throat> I beg the police chief, can't you get me one of those speed things? Oh, well, we only have one and it's all over here. But I beg them, please set it up on my property. You've got to hit the brakes with some of these people. I'm tired of telling people to, they come off the road and I'm going, and all I get is, you know what? Yeah, you know what? And they will verbalize. They will. Yeah, okay. Do that traffic thing. Well, again, what I'm saying is you've got to get this right. Because the local people are paying the price for it. We are paying the price for it. More taxes, more and more and more. And my quality of life has gone nothing but downhill. I can't have a conversation with my wife. The cars that come up there, and of course, you know, every biker has to hear their motor. Yeah, let's sit there and while we're waiting for the next five cars to jump out into traffic. Let's just, you know, give it a few revs, crank that music up so my windows will start to rattle. Yeah, 1790, I try and keep the original glass in five minutes. And it's because people will do anything to avoid that sound. And I'm sure all of you are feeling it, anyone that has any kind of a side road are feeling this spillover of traffic created by this uncontrolled development here in the center of town. So, said my piece, I am not happy. And you know what? Again, they better get it right. It's long overdue. Just on my way in here, I know. Hi, my name is Bob Larkin. I live in 49 North Drive here in Northbrook. Uh, I can I can get my two points. Here you go. Again, I apologize. My name is Bob Larkin. I live in 49 North Drive here in town. Uh, I'll start with two points first. Uh, my approach to Center Town is down in the Old Post Road. How many have that? Uh, at the church, the bottom of the hill here, there's two problems. One is the sight line looking north of 22. That problem leads to cars coming down 22 and they want to take a left hand turn for the old post road. There used to be a sign here to sweep it down. It's going down. But I noticed in the design, the geometry there, that's going to encourage that 
but it happened more and more. Uh, my other problem is tires come to stop at 17 and whip around the corner and we're going to get to 22. Uh, again, it's, we're talking massive retaining walls to do the assignment. With your first comment, you were talking about this alternative, right? With the left turn coming up Route 17, left turn onto Clintonville Road, which is what. Uh, can you see my cursor or no? Are you talking about coming up northbound Route 17, making the left on the Clintonville Road? Is that the first? Is that the first part of your comment? Coming west or north, 17, and going north.
there's a crosswalk with the ADA ramp and all of that and, and the push button to stop the traffic. And perhaps I am I am inaccurate, but I have not noticed much use of that crosswalk. And what I've noticed, I mean, you know, I, I understand there are users of the crosswalk, but I'm, but I'm talking about the I don't know that it was needed. Uh, you know, if it hadn't put in, if, it, if the crosswalk had not been put there, uh, some other adaptation would have been accomplished. I know that most people use the parking lot at the, at the library for access to the, to the library rather than the crosswalk from somewhere down in that region. And instead of a crosswalk, a right turn lane there where the uh, to bring the traffic that's coming south and wants to turn right onto 22 to get out of town. Um, it's a matter of letting the traffic go where it wants to go, giving it time enough to go with long red lights. I think if someone is looking at a red light that's lasting three or four minutes at rush hour, they're going to get used to that because it's red light stop. Green light go, and the lights are just not efficiently timed. And I think there could probably be a couple more lights in town and some additional right turn arrows and things. Yeah. My point is that this grandiose infrastructure change happens now. The problem has been for 30 years. And why has not anything less impacting been tried at least? We go from a problem that lasts forever, perennially, to this gross infrastructure change involving billions of dollars. And we're looking at existing traffic lights that could be tweaked to control the flow. Management tweaking the lights 
um, just the flow of traffic needs to absolutely improve. Accessibility should absolutely be considered, again, because everything should be accessible for everyone, and I think it's great that that has been included in the plans. So that's all I have to say about that. Rights in a 58-day lane. Uh, we moved to town in 1957. I wasn't born then. I was <laughs> I'm a lot younger. Anyway, uh, I've got a few questions on the, you know, the plan. Uh, I see we're going to reconvert the coming down by uh, the Northford Library and uh, the Stone Church there to come back down that hill. Uh, as a teenager, many winters went at the stoplight right here. Uh, I slammed on my brakes to go across Middletown Avenue into the Northford store. Uh, or I cut across the, uh, that green patch because I couldn't stop because it's too steep. Now, I heard you guys talking and you kind of blew by it real quick about uh, the sway of the road and stuff like that. You know, standing in front of uh, St. Andrew's Church in that steep embankment in front of it, looking off the other side, I bet you that road drops about three feet. So, uh, what's going to happen to the uh, the buildings, uh, the stores that are in that area? Uh, we're talking about the filling and stuff like that. Another thing that comes to mind is the uh, the road, the option of going behind by the Italian club and coming out by uh, uh, the library or, or wherever. If you go to the back there, that property is owned by the land trust and that property was donated to the land trust for uh, not to be used for anything. Can you in fact get that property to put that road in the back? I mean, these conceptual things are very pretty, but can you really do it? Really do it? I guess regarding the, the land ownership, that I am not extra. I guess. Uh, He's saying the land trust does not actually own the property that we're The other side of the Italian club's soccer field because the Italian club wanted to. Back to the 
DOTs will have their comment, and so we'll have comments on this as well, because there are significant great issues there approaching the intersection. So that we are aware of that, and it's something that we're obviously going to continue to look at. Um, hello, my name is Rita. I'm the school paths. Um, my question is, is there a consideration for protected bike lanes? I know in the study they mentioned that there were no collisions reported, but it should also be mentioned that it is very dicey when you bike in the center. Um, and I believe in one study I was looking at, I believe more people feel like a 35% safety when there's a protected or at least some barrier of some sort with the bike lane. So I was wondering if that was an into consideration. Each of the alternatives has a five-foot bike lane that we show along the corridor. That's like one of the things we've tried to include in each one. There's a sidewalk component as well. There's a two-foot buffer as well. And, yeah, and it's kind of mentioned a two-foot buffer as well in addition to the five-foot bike lane. So there is the buffer along the lane in each of these alternatives. Okay, great. And then my second thing regards room spaces. Um, for anybody who's local to the town, they know Brantford and Guilford Center very well. and. Those are wide green spaces, they have lovely oak and maple trees. And it always broke my heart a little bit when I drove through Northford and I noticed the lack of green spaces that we have. You know, if you look at it, it's just that tiny little patch um, with a dedication to veterans on that stone there. Um, I was wondering if there is any type of consideration for expanding the green spaces in the area and what that would look like or would look like. I guess the only one that would really look at anything regarding an expansion would be that fourth alternative. Um, that would, this is really the only one that would really provide any opportunity for that. I know there are still dri there are driveway access points on Old Post Road that conflict a little bit with what we're trying to do. But that would be the, this would be the potential expansion for this alternative. Okay. Um, sorry, I have two more kind of things to say. Um, on page 54 of the study, it says that the POC proposes to reduce the front yard setback requirement in the B2 zone and encourage that buildings are oriented towards the street with parking located behind the buildings. Um, and I noticed that there wasn't really much in the first proposals, the four proposals that in front of us, about what that would happen. I just think that um, if the plaza, if those businesses were closer to the road, the public parking in the back, I think that would not only revitalize their retail and their property values, but also would help enhance um, the economy in Northford as well. Um, and then my final statement, and I'll shut up, is to the woman who mentioned um, that it's great that you know ADA considerations are being considered. Um, I think. When it comes to those matters and when it comes to disability, it should be top of mind. Studies have shown that what's good for anybody with a disability tends to also be incredible for people who are able-bodied as well. I mean, just look at elevators, look at ramps, easier on the knees, helps us get around much quicker and with ease. Um, so I think when it comes to considering disabilities and how they are able to access the space, I think it should be top of mind because it would be beneficial for all of us. Thank you. Just for anyone have one of your comments on the pushing the buildings closer to the street, we are going to have form-based zoning included as a concept for the town to look at more to try to to try to talk about what you said to have the buildings be closer to the street and park in the back to try to create that more connected downtown. Hello everyone, my name is Diane Kuchia, and I think it's four on the which is quite long side of the front Compared to many of you folks, I'm a newbie, uh, living here in this wonderful town for 21 years. So, who am I in general? I'm a person who likes statistical data. I like to pull the curtain back and find out where this is for this, what the statistical things are showing up as an example, how much would the sum of this cost us, and what are the top things on um, your progressive items here, which I feel are progressive, um, are the highest high value that our community is going to access. I know, I, I hear there's traffic trailers, but 
believe me, I hear those Jake Perry things. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Now, beyond the scope of that, I do think it's important to have safety in relationships. We need to be a complement on everything we do, whether it's in school systems, public, etc. But we also have to use the common sense then and say, we are, if I slice one more third in half, we're a farming community. We are not a big town city. Um, part of the charm of this area is that we have people that have been they've grown up here, their families have worked the dirt. <laughs> you know, they are the history of this town. And I'm not going to be a resident, quite frankly. Um, so for me, how did this even start to be a conversation with our parish? Figuring at this point, the members of our town community area, town hall. And beyond that, cost projection, time element, the impact on the existing traffic that we have today, which is already a lot more than what it was when I first moved here. It, it totally the trucks, big time the trucks. No need to one person said here about the traffic, how fast people are going. I'm one of those people that uses the cruise control, and I've got people flying by me. So, yeah, we need to, we need to have something on that. And yeah, that intersection, you come down and you got to do like so, and everybody's going in different places. I get that. I don't like that either. But the fact of the matter is, is we are who we are. And we like our town. If we're going to make modifications, let them be sensible that we have an understanding. Look, I see people on bicycles when I'm going down 22. And I tell you the truth, I wouldn't want my kids on 22 on a bicycle. Of course, my kids are adults now. But nonetheless, it's scary. So whatever we do, and we need to be able to make it here and have ability for people to, to travel around safely. You know, other towns have really, really, really nice trails where they can bike right on the trail as well as walk on the trail. I know we have a lot of property in this wonderful town and it's exclusive for North Brantford and Northford to maintain its viable history of who all of the generations before helped to create where we are now. Um, I don't want to be here any longer than to say I thank you for your patience as listening to me. And any statistical data that you could provide us tonight might actually help us to understand why we're here to hear these items that apparently it's felt somewhere along the way that we need to make these major changes. And again, what percentage do we have of people that have now about to say, I need more bicycle space, I need more of this, I need more of that, I need one of these turnaround intersections. I get it. We do have some things that over time can be improved upon, but we still have to remember who we are here in North Brantford slash Northford. And I thank you for your time. And I appreciate you folks because you know when you've got an education in these, in these selective areas, and we need your input, but we need to be able to meld your input with what our values have been. Thank you. My name is Leslie Williams. I live at, one, at 595 Woodhouse Avenue, actually in Wallingford. I am a lifelong um, member of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, and I grew up here in town and live very close. My number one concern is that in most of these examples, Old Post Road will be cut off and not be able to access the center of town. Is that true? Only in this alternative four. Alternative one, two A, two B, and three don't need to show that. Okay, because it has a lot, like it's not broken off. Yeah, only only in that last alternative, the other one. Okay, because if you do that, you need to be able to let the people that live on Old Post Road and all that be able to cross the, um, Cross 17 going towards Durham, so then there needs to be a light at Malby Lane or at the end of Old Post Road. 
I come in on that horrible 150-22 intersection every time I come to town. If you're going to mess with, with uh, Old Post Road, then that's going to be an alternative, and that's going to get worse. Um, I don't understand what this green thing is next to the um, Italian club right above it, right? I guess that's north, not really the west. Yes, what is that? That's where. So that's actually on um, Ardsley Ave. It's right there. It's just there right now. It's just being relocated a little bit to try to make the intersection safer by making the four wheelers. Right, but what is the green? Is that going to be just space? There's no. There, it, it, it's show, yeah, It's not showing anything. It's not, we're not showing anything. So that's taking some of that land that was that's already there that's not um, doesn't have anything on it. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, a, okay. it's an undeveloped piece of land that yes. can be developed Okay. Um, um the ADA, huge. The crosswalk that Paul mentioned, it's great. Let's have a crosswalk next to the library, but it ends. It needs to go all the way up the hill, or there needs to be a path that goes around the back of the library to the parking lot. Um, I like that all the things are connected in the back. That's so smart. And we actually, Dean and I talked about that on Sunday. Um, <laughs> the idea of crosswalks, right now, if you come down from St. Andrew's Church and you try to cross the street to buy milk for coffee hour, there's a big sign with the walk by with a red line through it. The state put up do not walk signs in the center of North. So please, you know, crosswalks are important. And the idea that you can connect the community center with the library, the stores, the um, condos is really good. But I'm not really sure on um, this one I don't mind so much, but um, the one where it has everybody coming down from 150 and 22 <laughs> all the way down the hill, I don't know about that. But that's, um, so I'm not really a member. Also, um, at St. Andrews, we've had more than once land scooped away. Like if you look at pictures of St. Andrews from when I was a child, we weren't on a cliff. The road, it was a little bit of a hill, but I can remember standing on the top of that cliff the very first time and thinking, you know, our parents were like, don't go near there. Um, but um, the first time the state came in and planted these horrible bushes, and refused to maintain them. So we were left with horrible bushes. Then, um, then something, I don't know if that was the water came through, and they ripped out all the bushes and left us with grass and some horrible bushes along the top. So I am interested in what is gonna happen to that front right there. Yes, so. In terms of right away, like for the churches, alternatives you want, you might go back to the alternative one. Alternatives one, two A, two B, try or, or minimize the amount of right away acquisition. I know there are there would be issues with right away acquisition in alternative three because it's in a roundabout that would be taking up more room. But here, when we're trying to tee up the intersection, that we would try to, the intent would be to minimize any right away. I know we are trying to tee it up, but the intent would be to minimize that, whereas that would be more of an issue in the roundabout because it is a larger footprint that would be. Potential. So, what would we be left with in this scenario? Grass or a retaining wall? There would be a retaining wall on the one side of the driveway because of the, because there are the great issues there. There would be, there'd be a retaining wall, and then the rest would remain unchanged. Okay, thank you. Yes, Paul. Um, I think that's all the questions. Okay. Um, I'm not going to give you fluff. I'm going to give you facts. Ryan nailed it. Gentlemen that said we need traffic lights nailed it. Make all businesses one way in. 
behind them all put a double lane road. At each end of that double lane road, put traffic lights. Have it come out by Dunkin' Donuts. You got the one way in for Dunkin' Donuts, take it the two way out. Get the traffic, what's the problem? People trying to get out of the stores, not in. So make them one way in, make uh, Mansfield Drive bigger, expand out of this avenue, because that's what Carol Zed tried to do many years ago and it went nowhere. Thank God they woke this up again and we'd still be in Crash Alley here. You don't have to have fancy roundabouts in that You just got to make it one way into the businesses and get, let them exit, Mansfield Drive, make it a two-way business road yeah. so they get deliveries. I mean, these four trucks that try to make deliveries can't get in. Make it three lanes if you have to with the truck lane and just let the traffic flow into all the businesses and then they can go left if they want to go towards Durham out of Mansfield. They can go right if they want to go 22 out next to Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, and put traffic lights where you need them and make them last long. I don't think we need fluff. We need just facts, move traffic, like he says, a four minute red light, deal with it or don't come to our town. It's as simple as that. Thank you. That's actually what this alternative is trying to, to show here is having the roller go along the back side of the plaza and then circulate. Way in, one way out at Mansfield um, as well. So that's kind of, this is kind of that same scenario. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Gallagher. I'm from Nathan Young, where the engineers across the street. Um, I think these, you know, the majority of these plans are well thought out, but I just have a couple of thoughts. Um, in option number four, uh, because if that ever does become the, the prescribed plan, uh, I think you need a designated right hand turn lane. Uh, the, uh, I would also represent uh, people who own the property that you we are relocating the uh, IRC Avenue, and I also represent the people that are west of this new driveway in the back. So at some point, I get into my car and let me know uh, what's going on with that. Um, the, I think everybody has to understand that the key to these plans is pedestrian safety and traffic safety. You know, this thing we've seen because of right there, countless accidents. You know, we, uh, I've seen bicycle accidents, pedestrian accidents, car accidents, truck accidents. All because of what this gentleman who was just before me said, people coming out of the businesses out onto 1722. This plan is going to be designed to solve that problem because the accidents will continue if they don't. Hello. Um, two, two comments briefly. We have the thorough traffic that stops and does that goes to the businesses here. We also have the through traffic. It has nothing to do with the businesses in North. They're just coming from Durham or West or South or whatever and just flying through town. Having nothing to do, having nothing to do with going into the businesses. I appreciate this egress problem from the businesses. That's big because people egressing from the businesses think they have right of way just as much as a guy across the street on the, on the, on the highway. So that's a problem, but the realization, I appreciate your comment, the realization that yes, some of this is traffic, but a large chunk of it is through traffic, just people going through town. The other thing I'd like to mention is, I call it the Bill, uh, the Bill Miller uh, Roundabout, uh, the uh, rotary down here in the Notch Hill. Uh, wow, yeah, it is so under-engineered, it's uh, pretty much a freak show down there. And so I don't know who, I don't know where that came from, uh, what the uh, what the criteria were, but they had an unfortunate house fire right there. So that land was available, which seems to be to fund the property to the right as one approaches. So there, there apparently was no real estate, real property footprint constraints. So I don't know why it ended up so small. 
but it does its good job and it, and it has in fact to create cues, rush hour cues that are really dangerous because people don't know how to figure out a small round of uh, Thank you very much. This alternative here would only be the just that corner in here in order to get up a little bit, yeah, a little bit up in there. There would, yeah, there would be a little bit of random acquisitions to try to do up in that intersection there. That's the only. The gas station. Yeah. The gas station. Nothing, nothing involving the gas station there. Um, on the north, on the north side, just directly above the signal. In that area there, there would be, it pretty much follows along the, the edge of the road, but there might be a little bit of right away that's just needed to see up the intersection there. Um, this alternative, that's the only location that I believe. Other than, other than the boulevard? Okay. Yeah, other than the, the boulevard. Right, yeah, other than the boulevard, obviously, that would be, that'd be separate, but the right away acquisition regarding existing properties, that would be the location there. Is there a question specific to another alternative? Yeah, so the question is the, the rental acquisition on all these alternatives. And so these first one, two A and two B, like I said, all these all of these, all of these three are similar in that the rental acquisition is fairly minimal. The roundabout will have more because it's bigger footprint for the roundabout. Um, and then the fourth alternative, I don't believe there would be I just look for one. I don't believe that we're showing that would require a right of way acquisition here. So, minimal for the first is one and two. What is that section there? That, that section is further removal of existing pavement. I, I know you've talked about this with a few others about maintaining the driveway access, which obviously could be an important consideration. And this one, the road, so you can't get onto the driveway? Yeah, so the, the intent here would be to maintain Instead of having this, instead of having Clinton Mill Road be a one one way going up the page, it would be maintaining two directional uh, access. You can make left. It, it becomes two way. But this is this is the one that would obviously more so than the others would have to go to DOT because of the green issues. But you're not blocking Old Post Road from access to the to that road. No, you could you could still you could still you could still access. Yeah, that road is not blocked. Off. Correct. Yeah, they're, they're both technically called Old Post Road because Old Post Road to the right is not State Road, Old Post Road to the left where the turning lane is definitely. You too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's We will, we don't have any yet. Not the, the most expensive one likely is going to be this one because you're raising the intersection. You, this this is up the floor would, would be the most expensive. So yeah, so the question was about like, where we would where we would uh, publish the cost of these alternatives. We would be putting that in our alternative in the final report that we have, which would go over to the town. It would be, it would be reviewed by the state. It would go to Scrawl, and we would have multiple layers of review, and it would be published on. I think we can publish on the town's website. Mm -hmm. on the so, everybody 
Yeah. So the question was about the timeline um, for this project. So this is just a planning stage of the project. So ideally, we would narrow all the alternatives down to one preferred alternative, and then it would then it would involve the funding process. It would have to go through the funding process to fund the actual design of this. These are these are conceptual plans. So this is still looking a few years into the future for any implementation because this really is planning. This is the introductory phase to see what the public prefers or doesn't prefer. Narrow it down, obtain funding on the, the tablet, and obtain funding. And, and it would be the town could obtain funding through grants. Yeah. With the grant money. Yeah. So we uh, we work uh, we we're working on behalf of Scrog for this project. So Scrog is is the funding source. The, sir, it's the South Central Regional Council of Government. I personally like uh, the Archley Avenue uh, idea. Get, get the traffic more of it in the backyard of every business. It makes more sense. Now, do you have to go through eminent domain to get this land if we decide something like that? Can they turn you down or if it's partly on land or if it's needed for the roadway, can you... Uh, do that in the domain thing. I mean, everything out on seven, uh, 17 and 22, it, it's too much traffic. But we've got that all that empty area behind all the businesses. And you could increase the parking, get everything away from 17 and 22, you know, get the flow going. And if somebody's coming through town to that gentleman, tough. They're going to have to sit at the light. If they don't like it, find another route home. Or would 77 to the other? This is our town. This is the safety issue. We've got to get the traffic off of 17 for the shoppers. Let them own, only exit off of 17 into the businesses. And they get them two exits. One north and one south. But I don't know if, it, again, the legal thing about the property owners. Because Mr. Nathus was here, but he was talking about that. But if it's for our safety in our town, I think it's important to, to go forward with it. I don't think we need a roundabout. I think we just need to look at what we got and work with it. It was a good idea many years ago. Carol Zedler proposed it, and then it died at town council wherever planning is on. You know, we built the council members like toilet paper. So we, if, but nobody has the back history. Thank you. Just a quick question about uh, 2B and 4. I, my, I, as I see it, because we are at the church every day on the corner of Old Post and uh, Clintonville, what you've got there is a complete nightmare. I mean, there are cars going across the green because they're coming down that hill at such an excessive rate of speed. Then you have all kinds of traffic issues with cars trying to backtrack down 17 having to go through that little interchange, the most ridiculous amount of traffic is that area, that green. So I see this as an alternative to be, and then also for a combination thereof. I think it would solve a lot of things, but I think a traffic light, I, I don't know if she's still here, but she mentioned a traffic light at Old Post the traffic light at Old Post, two traffic lights in between, may actually slow them down significantly enough that the grade doesn't necessarily have to be a significant part of the interchange there. But, but two traffic lights there would allow Old Post to empty out properly. I, I love what you did with Alternative 4 because I think that's just a natural progression to allow the traffic to flow both ways up and down that hill. But a second traffic light in there would allow you to slow traffic up significantly so that it doesn't skid across into, you know, the pizza joint. So I think that would work exceptionally well, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see them combined. Yeah, you keep to, I love to be, I love the fact that we're addressing the flow of traffic uh, around the rear and giving access
access to the businesses. It'd be, it'd be wonderful to see those businesses businesses thrive. But I also think the most I think the most dangerous part of that intersection is what four addresses. I agree. An extra stoplight would absolutely slow people down here and give old posts access. I mean, and I don't think she's here anymore, but somebody said, you know, give them the opportunity to take the left hand turn or the right hand turn, but get down into that Main Street area. And, and then I don't know if it was the engineer that mentioned a right turn only at the base of this hill. You know, so. I don't know, there's, there's some really good ideas there, and I think it could be a, a really good solution for the center. It's, it's, pretty wi it's pretty wide. I don't know how you know, wide. It's pretty wide here. I don't know how much room you would have to talk about here. I don't know. I can check. He said that he said the hill, so I think we could talk about it. Professional opinion. And the reason my attention is here the reason is my intention is here. Again, and I'm going to go on your professional opinion. Is this work on the center, which is definitely needed, we all agree that, for safety, for pedestrian, all the other things. But is it going to help alleviate, I mean, more stop signs is going to make people say, hey, you know what, I'm going to avoid that, I'm going to go on, I'm just going to skip over on the old posts and head north on that, and then dump out up there by, you know, the northern, uh, up there, avoid the whole mess. I'm desperate to try and reduce this spillover traffic on more local roads. For again, I, trying to get home, have to queue up and wait for people to be able to pull out in the 17 there, so I can finally get up close enough to get, you know, make a dash and into my driveway. Anything that's going to hold people up here in the center of the town is just going to force more traffic onto our local roads, where it's now becoming a safety concern for me. I have a granddaughter that I can't get, I'm so deathly afraid. I can't cross over to pick up my mail. The post office wouldn't put a box on my side because of safety for them. So it's fun if I jeopardize myself. Anything to reduce the spillover traffic. Like I say, it's, it, it, they don't pay attention to the speed limit. Anything they speak from there, they're cutting off and they're trying to make up time on old post road. And I know that they're using other roads to bypass them. And so whatever we do, we have to make it so Coming down to the center of town and going left or right on 17 is a lot easier than coming on to a local road. And that's all. Do you think that these are going to be solved? For that? Or do we put in more stuff like that to wait people, oh, i got a four minute light here, four minute light there. Screw it. I'm going up on the post road. Avoid it all. So. so your question is more so than trying to divert traffic. What you say, Onto local roads, and 
I am the Nicopolis. I'm not the sun. So none of the, the intent of none of these alternatives is to put more traffic on local roads, especially with alternatives one, two, A, two B. It's just reconfiguring the intersections to make realigning the intersection. There's really nothing that would be sending more traffic on local roads really in any of these alternatives. I, I mean with potentially, I guess, the closure of that turning lane, the old post road, maybe we'd get people that would want to avoid that there, but I don't think any of these other alternatives are sending more traffic on the post roads. Yeah, I just don't see it is going to be more congestion. It's a, it's a okay, because of that lousy test that's in the center of town, anybody coming out of the road, that's what's center. 10 cars, 8 are going to choose to come out and drive by my car and force on Gentlemen, I want to explain also. Yeah, so with any design, obviously there would be additional public information sessions. This is kind of just the first step in, in, in your input. So as this progresses, there will be more opportunities for more people to have their, have their say and talk to them about this. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware that after COVID, all common sense is gone in the dragon seat. Um, <laughs> You're dealing with complete idiots that have no respect. Our age group, meaning Ronnie and I, because we're both young, we appreciate and respect our fellow drivers. Just gentlemen, I understand this concern, but you're not going to change those people. They're, they're so entitled that they want to go home to the dorm. They're going to aggravate you. They're going to aggravate me on Route 17. I can't go south on Route 17 and turn into my driveway because there's a blind spot. I've almost been pushed to the Haven. I have to go down the village street and come up north to turn into my driveway safely. Because drivers don't care. They just don't care. I understand your safety, and I agree with you. But you're not going to change the mentality of those sick people staggered waiting to kill themselves as they want on to the 17. They just don't care. And that's not something we're going to fix with nuts and bolts and asphalt. So again, we've become harder to it, and we've almost accepted it. There's no police that are allowed to chase anybody anymore. It's almost a market state. So this is what we got to live with. So fix the roads. Is it going to fix this part, the nut behind the wheel? So we're going to have to 
go with what we got, try to make it better, and deal with the idiots. And believe me, there's not a shortage of idiots.
Do I have the answers? Absolutely not. But I definitely have opinions on everything. Uh, so, with that, <laughs> with that, you know, I compliment you. Somebody's got to make the first step. Yeah. And that center needs to be re engineered. And yes. a lot of those, they're not, they're not 90 degree entries, but they're like 280 degrees coming out of 150. You know, that could be straightened out. Yeah. And then the ridiculous thing about the green, the green, the church owns that, that property, and whoever designed that, you know, to, to 280 degrees, to see what traffic's coming, you know, it's, it's more engineering. It, it goes along with the rotary and the uh, and guilt. And the guilt. Yeah. 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 It's just a big world. Make a first step. Make me happy. Put a crosswalk somewhere. You can't get from one side of the room to the other. Uh, the, pro the only crosswalk we have in town goes from Mansfield Drive into an embankment. Okay? You know? Even the kids can't climb it to get in the library. So, I mean, we, we, we need some common sense and we need something and start. We'll complain about it later, but I'm sure it will. we need some improvement. And like I said, to recap, it's 1940s technology. The world is turning. It used to be the local I-91. And it's still the same Actually, uh, two questions. One's about to be in and about four. Um, the gentleman here was talking about how, like, the potential or the concern for these changes to push traffic onto local roads. I was curious, just playing off of that, if you do the connection from Arsley to Mansfield, is that correct? In this proposed one, that bath road there, is that the specific? Yes. Um, how, would, how would that be managed when people decide to use that as some sort of cut through? Like, I know the, the idea is that it wouldn't be, it seems a little more inconvenient, um, especially if you're just trying to get cut through the town. But I also know people are sometimes impatient, and if traffic's not flowing at those lights, um, you know, what what should we expect at that point? People cutting back there and flying through that cut through to cut through a few lights to come out the other side. Um, do we think that might be a problem? There would be some curvature to it, so people might just be able to fly straight through. Yeah. Yes. I have a second question. Okay. Yes. Sure. Well, my dear, what would be the question? One, two, three, maybe you have in that RPM. Make it a business size. Not a cut through. If it has to have a curvature, it has to have a curvature. Yeah, I think the important thing is that we have to learn. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Don't think our city with no money. Yeah, you like it. Thank you. Thank you. to the 17 line. You can have a, if you can get the land that's doubling dollars, it's going to be like there for people who want to own to the issue. But capitalize it would deter people from using that. So you could also put some speed bumps and some stop signs with it, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 It says it's a bunch of obviously significant control speed. However, the curvature on that boulevard is intentional. That would slow down traffic. The stop signs there are intentional to slow down traffic. Uh, both, uh, I guess, both of which are trying to serve as ways to slow down traffic. Um, and there are additional measures. Well, I'm looking for speed bumps. I think that's the other thing to try to slow down. Uh, uh, thank you. And then for number four, for believe it was four, Yes, um, you were mentioning earlier that the parade, I'm sorry, I, wherever it goes up, I don't, I remember I said looking, I don't remember where I was saying it. Um, so, yeah, right there. You were saying that the parade would be revised there, is that correct? So, I, someone earlier, I know she's still here, had mentioned concern that if we eliminated that right turn um, coming down that hill at any sort of speed, then that gentleman there is thinking about a 
what else kind of lies down, which is absolutely true. Um, so you're suggesting a great change to help reduce the intensity of the decline, or what exactly would happen then? Yeah, so in terms of design, the grade would add that but the preferred grade would be to be less than 6% grade or, or less. Right now, I think it's like, there is double digits is what the grade is there. So whether it's lowering at Old Post Road or raising at uh, Mansfield Drive, that signalized intersection, there would have to be some sort of grade adjustment to slow, to make it so it would be able to be designed and to slow down the traffic. Again, this is something that will have to do with the DOT, but it, it, the grade would have to be reduced or the same would be viable. It already is, um, the descent on Old Post Road is drastic. Um, I don't know, I'm not a year in the civil engineer, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Two points, please. Um, the consideration for bike lanes in town all of a sudden evaporates once one leaves town. So what happened in town? Uh, why use the footprint for a bike lane that could be used for a turn lane? For example, and I, I appreciate the attention to ADA, I'm, I'm definitely uh, in favor of that. And I know the difficulty in pedestrian navigating northward. It's uh, pretty much taking one's life in one's hand. The crosswalk below the library is unusable. That bit of real property, that footprint, could be used for a right turn lane to get the traffic out of town that wants to leave town. My question is, and then I, I shall not uh, continue, has any consideration been given to tweaking the existing infrastructure as a solution to the volume control of town? Or perhaps the addition of light, but this grandiose infrastructure, gradient, uh, change of road, paths, and all of that costing billions, has the alternative of tweaking lights in the millions of dollars been considered? Or have we jumped to spending uh, billions in the No, so the, the, the great time to just say would be a general, could, would be a general recommendation that that would have so they would operate that way regardless regarding the 17 right turn on the 22. We can look at the volumes again. I can't remember how what the traffic was. I thought it was fairly light for the right turns from south on 17 to 22, but we could look there to see if it's worth having a right turn. And regarding the bike lane, the purpose of the bike lane would be to connect regionally. It doesn't, it, it, we know here that it's connecting for future bike or connecting to future biking. It doesn't serve a purpose yes. really just in this one area and then having so the intent is for a large I can see that it says connect the future yeah. bike lane, but there's no width on 17 for a bike lane. There, I don't mean to be beating you up, I'm just saying there is no width on 17, so we're talking about a major infrastructure change on 17 at the state level and they make it wide enough for a bike lane. On 17, you know, right there where that says connect. So I would say that 17 is a state designated bike route yeah. via DOT, whether they have the width or not, yeah. outside of our study limits, yeah. we didn't necessarily evaluate that. But I think there but is here. Within right? the project limits there is. Yeah. Correct, yes. Yeah, so within the project limits, like, uh, can you go back to like one, like one or two? The one that shows the width of the... Yeah. There, we're showing five-foot bike lane with 11-foot travel lanes and two-foot bumpers without adjusting the edges of road. In, without adjusting the edges of road in any of these locations. Without adjusting the edges of road um, throughout the road. So there wouldn't really be any walking here. Bike lanes would fit, at least within our study in this area. In, in this area, in the area that we looked at, bike lanes would fit. And this is a state that's a bike group anyway as well, for the state. But there wouldn't be any bike lanes to, to accommodate the bike in any case. So, your response to my question about the traffic lights, has that been considered early in this process, or has it been not considered? Yeah, just tuning things up in town. 
that's that that, that could be one of our that, that is one of our that is going to be part of any of our alternatives for future time. Is it standalone? Is that the question? Yes. I was saying yes. Prior to this sort of investment. So it could be done right now and to a proof of concept, see how it works. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I agree that yes, yeah, so these will these need to be they will need to be done. That is that regarding one that you want to done now is what they're kind of getting at. I would like the time you would like to be a design alternative and it could be tried or I don't know how much money it would take to sure. yeah. it. But to see as a as a proof of concept that it would work. Because the problem in rush hour I know this gentleman is concerned about local commercial traffic. That's kind of a separate issue. Okay. Yeah. Now, we can get what we need to do as a general approach. I just have a question. Uh, I understand we need uh, traffic more than anyone else. I live on two old posts, so right on the corner. So with uh, the proposal number four, that would completely get rid of any access to the property and all of it, and my neighbor. So, uh, uh, you know, I think if you, uh, I'd like a double lane coming down if you shave a little off the park, but you got to still have the right side of that access to my property. Agreed. Yep. Definitely. It's already tough to get in now. If I want to go back home, I gotta loop around and come around it. But that's what we bought, you know. We like the we bought it because of the location and all that. That would just totally get rid of our driveway. Yeah, and that that will be in any future recommendations, right? Yeah. 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 Appreciate if you could go to the back if you haven't already and add some add stickers, stickers to your preferred alternatives, add comments on sticky notes. 